Joining us today on MSUEagles.com is one of the new assistant men's basketball coaches here at Moorhead State, and that is Brian B.J. Ellis. Uh, B.J., congratulations to you and your family. I know it's been a whirlwind the last couple of weeks. Uh, you are following head coach Sean Woods from the last position at Mississippi Valley State uh, here to uh, the eastern part of Kentucky. And uh, I know that you've had a lot going on here, but congratulations. I know you're excited about the new opportunity. Oh, thrilled. I, I don't know. There's not too many things I've been more excited about in my life. Uh, this this is right up there. Of course, getting married and having my daughters was is up there. But this, I mean, I think as a staff, we're just so excited to be here. You guys had a tremendous year last year at Mississippi Valley State. Um, I guess when Coach Woods had inherited that program, they didn't have much of a tradition for winning. They certainly weren't winning SWAC championships. You guys last year, 21-13 and 13 overall. I believe you won 17 straight. Uh, 17 out of 18 you won in the conference and then the, uh, the NCAA tournament appearance after winning the, the conference tournament. But I guess when you look back on that experience now and maybe – 10 or 15 years down the road, what will stick with you? Um, you know, we had a special group of guys. Uh, I don't think that I'll ever forget the, the kids that played for us and um, what they gave to the program. Uh, of course, Woods did an incredible job with them. Uh, it There was a lot of uh, turmoil and, and, and the resources weren't great. So I think that I remember a lot of the struggles as well as you know the wins and and the camaraderie that we had is is a a group and uh, you know it, it it was a great year I and mean, that's all you can say nobody won 17 in a row and you know the guarantee games that we had to play we could tell it was coming you know Coach Wood just always said you know keep them together keep them together keep them together and it seemed like it hit and it was the next thing that I knew it was 17-0 and 0 and we needed one more for a perfect season that had never been done in the SWAC. Um, so those are some of the things I think I always think about. My daughter being born um, during our conference tournament, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Uh, but it's, I mean, it was a phenomenal year. It was, probably, it was the best year of my life basketball-wise for sure. You talk about those guarantee games. Um, I've heard Sean say multiple times, both in private and publicly, that his mentality is, I'm not afraid to play anybody at any time. I know that will continue here at Moorhead State, but just talk about some of the, the larger scale BCS level opponents that you guys played there and, and um, kind of that mentality hopefully moving forward here to Moorhead State. A real competitive schedule is in store, I'm sure. Yeah, well, we, um, we opened up at Notre Dame. I think they were coming off a uh, Sweet 16 run. We went to DePaul. Um, then... We, I don't, I don't remember the exact order, uh, but we played Florida. We played North Carolina next. That was their first home game, so they played oh, wow. Michigan State on the carrier that everybody watched. Right. And then they flew home for us, and uh, that was a great experience. I've never seen so much, so much light blue in my life. I mean, it looked like <laughs> I was looking at the sky when I looked up in the stands, and Tyler Hansborough was sitting behind us, um, and our guys were kind of wide-eyed to start the game. But then we went – we played Florida, we played Arkansas, we played Ole Miss, we played Wisconsin, we played Iowa State. We played 11 or 12 BCS level teams. We played a tournament in Vegas. Um, that's where we beat Tennessee State at. And uh, I mean, it, Woods is not scared. You know, I, it's it's five on five, you know, 10 on 10. It's a coach versus a coach. The basket's 10 foot. He ain't scared to play nobody. And I think his mentality rubbed off on our guys where they weren't scared either. And you know, it's hard to go into those places because if it's a two-point game, you know exactly which way the calls are going to go at the end of the game. And, you know, Iowa State, we lost by two. South Carolina, uh, we lost by, I think, three. Um, I mean, we were right there back and forth in certain games. You know, we had uh, Western Kentucky beating the NCAA tournament. So it's because of Woods' mentality, I, I think, that our guys weren't scared going into that. And that schedule led to us – having success because we dominated Western Kentucky for 36 minutes in the NCAA tournament. And our, guard, our guys weren't scared at all. We had been in that before. Uh -huh. And, you know, it was a long process that first semester playing those games with the travel because it wasn't like we chartered. You know, there, there was one, one stretch where we left at 3.30 in the morning and we got into Vegas like 17 hours later 
Whoa. And we had like three layovers and, you know, multiple hours. And, you know, it was tough. But uh, it, it seemed like the first semester lasted about three years. <laughs> and it seems like the second semester lasted about three minutes. Um, but not going through that first semester, I don't know if our second semester would have been as special as it, as it was. B.J. Ellis is joining us today on MSUEagles.com as we announce him as one of the new men's basketball assistant coaches here at Moorhead State. And, B.J., you're at this point pretty well-traveled between your playing days, your coaching days. You, you kind of put together this nice uh, college basketball coaching journey. But I guess when you first realized that Sean was at the very end uh, in the process here at Moorhead State and, and the opportunity for you to move with him became a reality, what kind of popped in your head about the university, the basketball program, the this part of, of you know the state of Kentucky? Well, it's funny because um, I knew he was up here, and you know the whole time, uh, if you know if he was going to make a move, the plan was for me to go with him. And uh, he he called me and he said, "Where are you at?" And I said, "Well, coach, I'm at the Hampton Inn." And you guys don't know this, but I worked at the Hampton Inn every day because you know the internet was broke we didn't have a fax machine blah 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 so i always went to the hampton inn in the lobby and worked and i had their faxes sent there so he said pack up your stuff because i always carry my book bag with me i got it i got a little spread where i sat at the same desk every day he said pack your stuff up go home hug your wife tell her we're moving to moorhead kentucky wow and i got up and i did like a fist pump and everybody in the hotel was looking at me <laughs> and he said don't tell nobody or i ain't bringing with you so i didn't tell anybody um and i went home and i told my wife and she couldn't believe it. She was ecstatic, and uh, it's like you said, it's been a whirlwind couple of days, and now we're here and moved in, and the little girls are taking a nap right now. <laughs> That's great. Um, one step before Mississippi Valley State, you spent several years at Delta State, starting as a grad assistant, mm -hmm. becoming more of a formal full-time assistant. But I know, even back to your GA days, you were doing you know the work of a regular full-time assistant. Just kind of what comes to mind when you look back at those years uh, at Delta um, State, a, a D two in Mississippi. Well, you know, Delta State was a very, very special place. We spent five years there. Um, normally, as, as a young assistant coach, you don't get to spend five years at one place. Unbelievable um, institution from admission to, you know, the athletic administration. Uh, we were blessed. We had some really good players there. My boss let me work. Um, I was out recruiting. Nobody knew I was a GA. I mean, nobody knew that. And, um Sometimes my professors didn't like the fact how much I was out on the road recruiting, but, you know, there's a job to do. We had one assistant. We had to sign guys, so I jumped in. I, I feel like you always need to work above your pay grade, and that's something that my dad taught me. So I did go in as, an, as a GA, but I was working like I was a full-time guy, top guy there, and, you know, good things happened, and it led to what it is, and uh, hopefully that will continue. Your specific job responsibilities here at Moorhead State when we talk about monitoring academics and we talk about planning for practices and scouting and game preparation and coordinating travel, have, have you and Sean gotten into a lot of that yet as far as your specific duties at MSU? No, we're, we're trying to sign a couple kids right now, so we, we really haven't had much organizational, organizational type meetings. Um, you know, at Valley, we all split up the scouts, um, the assistants. There were four of us that did the scouts, so I'm sure that it'll be like that here. Um, Coach Woods is, is very, very big on academics, so we each have a certain group of kids that we have to check their classes. It's not like one guy checks all the classes. So I'll probably have three or four guys that I'm responsible for. And then, you know, the name of this game is being able to get players. So that's always a priority um, for me and everybody else on our staff. But uh, – so recruiting will be huge and, um, you know, of course, coaching on the court and doing individuals. Uh, I don't think much is going to change, you know. You've alluded to it a couple of times. Recruiting is kind of the lifeblood, a lot of people say, of, of the program. I mean, it's it gets you to where you need to go and, and doing it the right way is even more fulfilling, I guess. But, um, you know, when you look back the places you've been, kind of the recruiting philosophy, I guess, that you've put together, I know – you guys want to try to get as many good kids from the state that you're right. in, which is Kentucky now. I know that, that Sean and Dylan Howard, the associate head coach, have good ties to Kentucky. So I'm sure it'll be kind of a Midwest philosophy, but just your general thoughts on recruiting. Yeah, I mean, of course, you always want to hit the state that you're in, um, grow pride in the university within the state. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to go out and get the best student athletes that we feel can help us win games 
and do what they're supposed to do at the same time because it's not just about winning games, but it's so much about winning games. Um, so Kentucky will be a priority. We've got a list together already. Um, and then, you know, all of our contacts around the country will be using for sure. Before we let you go, B.J. Ellis is with us today, the new uh, men's basketball assistant coach here at Moorhead State. And uh, can't let you go without talking about your playing career. You were very successful at the junior college level. You made a couple different stops as an undergrad. Just uh, hit a couple highlights for us uh, as far as your playing days are concerned. <clears throat> well, at the high school, I went to Okaloosa Walton, which is now Northwest Florida, um, the JUCO right next to my house. I got a chance to play for a guy named Bruce Stewart who just passed away a couple years ago. I I think he was one of the the, uh, the the toughest, smartest, hardworking guys that I've ever met. Um, he was a phenomenal coach. He spent some time at Middle Tennessee, played for him for a year. I'm no Sean Woods. Um, I was okay. I could shoot a little bit, but uh, I knew that if I was going to have to play that I needed to go somewhere else because the guys that were coming back were a lot better than me. So I went to Enterprise uh, Ozark Community College in Alabama, and I got to play a lot more. Um, we won a state championship at both JUCOs that I was at. Then my wife was playing um, volleyball at West Florida, and that was close to home and it was on the beach, so I decided to go there. Um, and then we got two little kids now, so I guess that was a smart move on my part. <laughs> uh, I knew I wasn't going to be a pro, you know, so I wanted a good education. I wanted to be with my girlfriend at the time, who was my wife. Um, and that's, that's where my playing career ended at West Florida. Well, BJ, on behalf of everybody associated with Morehead State Athletics and all the Eagle fans here in Eastern Kentucky, we certainly welcome you and uh, congratulate you on the new position. And as we get closer to men's basketball season, I'm sure we'll be talking to you more frequently. So thanks for your time today. We know it's been uh, very hectic for you, and uh, we'll be checking in with you again soon. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here.